You may well remember that earlier this year we tested Honda's brand new Africa Twin and I rather liked it off-road, although I felt it left a little bit to be desired on the tarmac. So we wanted to give it a really, really thorough testing with a good long ride off the tarmac and a good long ride on the tarmac. And we even managed to get Grant and Susan from Horizons Unlimited to help us test it two up. And then we thought, well, where can we go and test it? Well, it is an Africa twin, so we came to South Africa. This Honda Africa twin test is a straight head-to-head -head between riding the manual and the DCT automatic versions in our most thorough review ever. We all know that Honda took the brave decision to stick with under 100 horsepower as these bikes are designed with adventure trails in mind more so than tarmac. Almost 19 litres of fuel gives a range of nearly 250 miles. This bike is ready for the big adventure. And it's skinny compared to a GS or a Triumph Explorer, weighing in at just 212 kilos dry. That's almost as light as the KTM Adventure R, but not quite. So what about the differences between the dual clutch transmission and the manual bikes? Well, DCT has been around a while now, going all the way back to the VFR 1200F in 2009. So Honda have had time to perfect it, and it's pretty flexible. You can ride it in full auto, it's your basic point and squirt. DCT does everything for you. Pop it into sport, and you'll get longer intervals between the gear changes. And you can override and change gears with the buttons on your left hand in those modes. Or there's the fully manual mode. Still no toes changing gears, but you do get control over when and where the bike changes gear. Again, using your left hand buttons. first order of business was tarmac and getting some real miles under our belts. So we joined a group of South African friends for a long distance trip. We'll show you more of this little adventure in future episodes, but for now, how was the bike on the largely smooth, grippy black stuff? Well, Honda had really positioned this bike as one to ride well off-piste, but they also make quite a song and dance about their low weight, low centre of gravity and low down torque, all contributing to, and these are their words, sprightly agility for the everyday commute. Well, if you work the engine hard, it is sprightly, but it's not thrilling. It handles very precisely, always going politely where you ask it to. It is fun. But when I jump briefly onto a GS adventure for a comparison, I have more fun on the GS. And if I was left smiling but vaguely uninspired by the manual bike on the tarmac, I don't even want to talk about the DCT. Of course, and this may sound blindingly obvious, there is no left foot gear shifter or clutch lever which is the weirdest thing when you immediately try and drop the bike into first gear with your foot, despite it already being in first because you engage the drive mode. You do get a handbrake though. Think about it, with no clutch, you can't leave the bike in gear on a hill. The handbrake is where your clutch would normally be, but pushed well forward so you don't accidentally grab it, thinking it's something it's not. I haven't been brave enough yet just to see what would happen if I did. Easy and simple to ride does not make 
fun to ride. However, then... tested the bike on some basic off-road gravel trails and light sand. Now this bike was talking to me. I think it's the most natural feeling bike off-road in its class. And that is praise indeed. From the moment you get on it, the geometry feels right for anything off a tarmac. Start moving your weight around to shift your balance, change your grip, or move the bike around and it is all there. I just couldn't get it anywhere close to its limits. We said at the start that this would be a thorough test. So now it's time to see what the bike is like to up with the help of Grant and Susan from Horizons Unlimited. So we've got Grant and Susan Johnson from Horizons Unlimited who have been testing the Africa Twin 2UP so we're going to get their opinion. So guys, how did you find it 2UP? It works. I think, it's, I think it's a, it can be a good travel bike if you want to do a lot of off-road. I think the GS wins for on the pavement. It's a little more comfortable. The Africa Twin had better leg room, leg room so if you've got long legs, the Africa Twin definitely wins there. I really noticed it. Um, Overall, good, works, nice bike. I think the one we had wasn't set up well, the suspension wasn't right, it was much too harsh, much too much compression damping. I understand it's been changed and it's improved, so that would make a big improvement. Susan really noticed the harsh suspension, and I noticed it going over potholes, but uh, modern tweaking and adjusting, it should be fine. Other than that, it ran like it was on rails, definitely very stable at speed. I think off-road for a good rider, you could fly. You could really have fun with it. Susan on the back, how did you find it? As Grant said, the suspension was quite harsh, and so I found myself really kind of trying to hold myself off the seat because if you hit anything, on the, especially on the off-road section, it, was like, it hurt. Mm. Um, and the seat, speaking of the seat, uh, I haven't yet found a seat that I like, but that one was probably worse than the, the GS. It's so tiny. It's like all of these companies think that, that the person that sits on the back must be tinier, you know, like a 10-year-old boy or something than, than the rider. Certainly not an adult female. So. But otherwise, yeah, I felt stable. I, I felt that too, that I wasn't as nervous on the off-road sections. So if you were on a trip that was mainly tarmac and you were preparing the two bikes, assuming the suspension was all set up as you needed it, yeah. if you had to choose between the two, between the GS and the Africa Twin, two up, what would you choose? Primarily tarmac and mm. definitely the GS. And Susan? Yeah, I would say so. Um, there's a lot of you know, hypotheticals there. We, I think to do a fair comparison, we'd need to have one set up properly. And, mm. and yeah. I'd like to have some more miles on it, more off-road, more tarmac on it. Um, but I think Honda's hit the mark. They are aiming for a more off-road bike, and BMW is clearly a more on-road bike. And I think they're both on the mark for that. So it depends on what you're looking for. It's a bit of a shame that the rain's been so heavy. And in fact, it has been properly heavy. I mean, it's been dry here for a long time, and the locals were saying the ground and the farmers really needed it, which is good. But the rain has been so heavy that in Johannesburg, a few hundred kilometers away, they've actually had you know, rivers of brown flood water down the highways and flights cancelled out the airport. And unfortunately, the effect it's had on the trails where we were hoping to be absolutely able to blast it along. Because when it's dry, it's hard packed and it's fine. But when it's wet, you get this mixture of kind of mud and silt and sand. And it's really hard to tell 
how solid the surface is because the muddy stuff looks pretty much the same as the hard pack stuff. And really the only way you can tell is if you can see somebody that's been along here before you and see how deep the tar marks are that they've left. Even to the point where Grant and Susan have come off two or three times and Grant hasn't come off in 20 years. Obviously they're riding two up which makes it a lot more difficult and we're on road tyres. Uh, but yeah, it's a real shame because it would have been great to have just been able to hoon it along these roads but got to be careful. In all honesty, in these conditions with road tyres, it didn't matter what bike you were riding. It was simply down to skill, experience and trying to find the least slippery path. We have given the Africa Twins a really thorough testing, both on the tarmac and off-road, but we wanted to take it one step further. So we've come to the home of ADA and True Adventure Africa. Now the guys at ADA have got an incredible facility here where they don't just do bike training, but they do car training, they do truck training, they've got a skid pan. And in fact, last year, the team from Ivaco came and did their Dakar training here. To help us with the test, we've got Johan Gray, who you may remember seeing on his YouTube video where he rescued a calf from a canal whilst he was in the middle of a bike race. Now, what's the best way to describe Johan? Well, you remember Bob, our tame racing rider? Well, Johan's a bit like a South African version of him. We're going down for the grinding exercise. It's very well, good exercise for practicing mud. Your approach angle is very important. Looking at the end, get the back wheel to spin. We need to slow down, get the other one. Angle again, wait on the outside, keep looking to the end, get the back wheel spinning, and that's it. Okay, now we're going to do the same grinding exercise with the automatic or the dual clutch transmission system. Now what's key for this exercise is your clutch control to keep the back wheel spinning, which you don't have on the DCT model. So let's just see how much we can get right with this bike. And actually not bad. Okay, no clutch control. Just throttle control and it can actually sort of do it. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs>
Okay, so out of the go, what, what bike do you choose in the end, the DCT or the manual? Oh, definitely the manual. It's so much easier to ride for me. More control as well. And I, I need control because I'm not very good off-road. So. <laughs> okay, but the DCT didn't do too bad in the end. No, no, no. In, in the hands of an expert, it's not too bad. Okay, so we need to find that person. Yeah. Okay. So if we take these two bikes for a race, um, how will that, how do you think that will go? What is your sort of bet for laps? Ooh, okay. So if I do two laps, and we'll see how many laps you can do in the same time, I guess you might do an extra one or an extra two to mine. It, it, with, with me on the clutch bike? No, no, I think I'll go on the clutch bike. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'll be on the DCT. Yeah. Okay, I think we'll be able to do about 10 for one. That sounds like a challenge then. Let's do it. Okay. So your challenge was you could do 10 laps to my two, you did three, so, I, so technically I won. I think if you look at it that way, it could be like that, but in the end it was quite key for me to understand how you're riding your riding style, and somewhere uh, my secret weapon and I miscommunicated when she was supposed to have distracted you. Okay. Um, but then also we did two up for most of the race in any case. <laughs> Whatever happens, you beat me hands down on the, on the flat race. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so it's crunch time. What did I think of the bikes? Now we've given them a really thorough testing on the road in horrendous rainy conditions as well as dry, off-road in a variety of gravel, mud, boulders, uphill and downhill. We've even had a professional rider come and test them with us. So let's start with the automatic, the DCT. So you can ride it fully automatic, you can ride it semi-automatic, so you do have some control if you want to. I think there is a place for it because there will be riders who want to ride an automatic bike. I think my wife included. However, I found it boring and everybody else who's tried it found it boring. So, there is a place for it, and according to the guys at Honda, they are selling lots of them, a lot more than I thought. However, it doesn't engage. It really, really does not engage me. It doesn't excite me. It goes, and that's about all I can say about it. So, to the manual Africa Twin. From the moment you get on this bike, you know it is a bike built to go off-road. And I loved it off-road and I felt in complete control of it, even when I flipped it in the mud, because it is a manual. It is easy to ride. It feels completely in the right position. However, and it's still the same however I had when I first tested it. As a bike to go on the tarmac, it's pretty good, but I wouldn't say it's great. You've really got to work the gearbox to get it moving around the corners. It does handle well, but it still feels just a little bit underpowered. So, the question is, would I have either of these two bikes in my garage? Well, the DCT is easy, not a chance. The manual, if I was gonna go on a trip that was 70% off-road, just like the bike that's built to go 70% off-road, yes, I would.
on to say that the CRF-1000L Africa Twin is the return of a legend. There is no doubt that it has inherited the spirit of those old Dakar Rally focused machines. It is undoubtedly a very, very good bike. It wears the mantle and carries the torch, just like it was designed to do. Will it be a legend? Ask me again in a few years' time.